Let's get a look at a technology that is admittedly outside of our normal purview, but one that makes wearables like Apple Watch or Google Glass look almost distant and trivial by comparison. It's called epidural stimulation. An electrical stimulator pack is implanted in the body and then has 16 electrodes that are finely wired to it that then connect onto an injured part of the spine of someone who's had a traumatic spine injury. Now these implanted electronics are not actually intercepting anything from the brain. There's no brainwave detection, no headgear. It's actually simpler and more robust. A little handheld controller talks to the pack inside which then relays signals to the spine itself to create the muscle movement. Those signals in turn prompt and almost remind the damaged part of the spinal cord how to move things like muscles in the hips, knees, ankles, or feet. Now, since these aren't actual finessed signals from the brain with that whole complex feedback loop, the movements right now are rather basic. Things like standing with just a little help or just wiggling your toes. Major steps for a nascent technology, even bigger ones for a person who thought they could never move those limbs again. What the researchers and doctors did not see coming is the improved muscle tone around the lower extremities that therefore is able to improve blood pressure control because of that better tone around major arteries and veins. And that in turn is part of what's helping these patients also get better bowel, bladder, and sexual function control. None of this was expected. They were just trying to move limbs. Dr. Susan Harkema is one of the pioneers of implanting this technology. She's at the Kentucky Spinal Cord Injury Research Center, working with UCLA and the Pavlov Institute, and with a lot of funding from, as you might imagine, the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. The device itself is made by Medtronic, kind of in a hack. Their original design was for the product to be using electronic spine stimulation to solve chronic pain, not move muscles. This is early days technology. Only four patients in the world have had this installed right now, but they've seen consistent long-term benefit from it. The next steps, I'm told, are to get more close to mimicking the actual signals and the feedback loop that the brain and healthy spinal cord are able to exert over muscles. That will lead to more nuanced and controlled muscle function.